As the old saying goes, what is an ocean but a multitude of drops? And yet, terrifyingly for us, several of those drops in question seem to be spectral vessels that have since haunted the seven seas, steering their way toward ghostly plunder and eternal servitude in the murky depths. Well, I mean, that was David Mitchell, but still, it sounds pretty cool, right? The point is, over several parts of this list, we've scoured the ship's manifest and detailed some of the most haunting and horrifyingly historical entries of shanties and watery tales. And luckily for us, there are still plenty more where that came from. So let's take a look, shall we? Hello, horror fans, what's going on? And once again, welcome back to the scary channel on YouTube, top five scary videos. As per usual, I'll be your horror host, Jack Finches. Today, we curiously take a look at the top five scariest ghost ships that haunt the sea, part three. Roll the clip. For the curious amongst you, that scene was from 1979's Dracula, starring Frank Langella and Laurence Olivier, of course, based upon Bram Stoker's classic gothic novel of the same name. And when we're talking about ghost ships, yeah, you know what's worse? Vampire death ships. I mean, I don't think I need to clear up exactly why that's the worst thing, but hey, luckily for us, vampire death ships remain to be just fictional. Well, I mean, there was that one time, but that's by the by. Let's take a look. Kicking off at number five the Caliuche. And for this first foray into these particular ghost ships that haunt the sea, we're going to be heading over to the mythologies of Chile and the many legends that have been built around its coastal landscape. One of those, according to Chilean legend, is that of the Caliuche, a large ghost ship that sails the seas of Chiloé, a small island just off the coast, where it only ever appears at night. The ship itself is said to appear as beautiful, cast in a bright white light, an enormous vessel with three masts and five sails each. It is said that when the Caliuche appears, it is always at night and always full of lights with the sounds of a great party and a feast on board. Quickly though, it disappears, plunging back beneath the murky depths. Interestingly enough though, although this vessel is said to be similar to the Flying Dutchman, there is a boatload of mythology relating to this particular legend. One of these versions claims that the vessel is crewed by the drowned souls lost at sea who are brought to the ship by three mythological figures in Chilean legend. Two sisters, one of them the Sir Rena Chalotta, a type of mermaid, and the other, the Pincoya, a type of water spirit said to protect the Chilean coast. And then their brother, the Pincoy, their male counterpart who has the body of a sea lion. It's pretty cool. Once aboard, the perished souls can resume their existence in an eternal reverie of adventure on the high seas. However, there is a much more sinister version of this legend, which states that the crew of the Caliuche instead sailed the Chilo archipelago, luring fishermen and sailors toward it with an enchanting music to enslave them as part of their crew fraternity, where they are twisted and then contorted and put to work in their afterlife. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I prefer the first one, actually. Swinging in at number four, the Eliza Battle. And for this one, we're pinching the parameters of the Seven Seas, and instead, we're taking a look at one of the most notorious maritime disasters that instead of on an ocean, occurred on a river. The Tom Bigby River, to be precise, a stretch of water that runs between Columbus, Mississippi, and Mobile, Alabama. And here we have the legend of the Phantom Steamboat of the Tom Bigby. Back in 1852, one of the largest river steamboats constructed at the time, the Eliza Battle, was put into service between the two southern states. During one particularly cold February in the winter of 1858, after the Eliza Battle had departed the city of Columbus, the ship made its way down river, stopping on the way at Pickensville, Gainesville, Demopolis and several other small river landings. By the time that the steamboat had left off at Demopolis though, it was filled to the rafters with passengers. And not only passengers, but also over 1,200 bales of cotton to be ferried to the final stop. Now, although it roughly still remains a complete mystery, around 2 a.m. on March the 1st, 1858, about 30 miles downriver from Demopolis, the crew of the Eliza Battle awoke, startled to discover that the cotton bales on the main deck were on fire. Flames soared and quickly engulfed the ship's hull, soon spreading out of control despite the frigid temperatures attributed to the odd, gussy evening. The boat continued onward, though the entirety of the exterior completely engulfed in flames and cut off from their lifeboats. The passengers, many of them who had awoken dressed in their night clothes, were forced to plunge into the icy river below. Now, some of them survived mainly by floating atop the remaining cotton bales, but all in all, over 33 people lost their lives, both crew and passengers included. The Eliza Battle quickly sank beneath the water, the wreckage 
image of which still lingers at the bottom of the Tom Bigby River. It's said that on a particularly cold and windy night, the Eliza battle will emerge from the icy fog engulfed in flames once again, a warning sign of an oncoming ill omen. Next up at number 3, the fire ship of Bay de Chaleur. Which, I mean, come on guys, that's probably the most awesome sounding title to anything on this historical list, right? The fire ship of Bay de Chaleur sounds like something that Geralt of Rivia himself would sail down to Skellig after a summer in Toussaint, but whatever, that's by the by, because this vessel in question actually takes us over to the eternally autumnal eastern tones of New Brunswick, Canada. Now the fire ship of Bay de Chaleur is also more commonly referred to as the Chaleur Phantom or the Phantom Ship. Ship, and it often takes the form of a series of ghost lights just before a storm, appearing as a large three mast galley. Now, the actual mechanics of this phenomenon are dubiously debated, and many believe it's caused to be down to either the weather phenomenon of St. Elmo's fire or an undersea release of natural gas after a patch of rotting vegetation just off the New Brunswick coast. I mean, that's a completely different story entirely, but what we're concerned with is the actual origin of the fire ship, the history of which is equal parts. It's tragic and gruesome. As the legend goes, back in 1501, a Portuguese captain had spent a year pillaging the coast of Bay de Chaleur, capturing Micmore natives for the slave trade. However, his cutthroat agenda was miscalculated, as a year later, when he returned to the region on his second voyage, he was captured, tortured, and killed by the Micmac people in revenge for their kidnapped tribesmen. The legend didn't end there, though, because a year later, the brother of the Portuguese captain sailed to the bay in search of his missing sibling, and upon seeing the same flags, the Micmac people attacked the ship, setting it ablaze whilst it was moored in the bay. Cut off, burning, and with certain death facing them, the sailors swore to haunt the bay for a thousand years as their blazing fire ship sank into the Bay of Chaleur. Now, whilst later both Micmac and Portuguese casualties washed up on the shores of the island, the bay itself is said to be haunted by those that perished, often appearing as distraught sailors and warriors, their flesh burnt by the fire ship. Swinging in at number two, the Princess Augusta. And on the topic of ghostly phenomenon, this particular apparition is perhaps one of the most well documented ghost ships of the 18th century, although the actual history behind it is shrouded in intrigue. Although the folklore account of this particular vessel is based upon the historical wreck of the Princess Augusta, a ship that sailed out of Rotterdam in August 1738 under the command of Captain George Long, in more modern records it is commonly referred to as the Palatine, where the Palatine Light, the apparition in question, famously gets its name. And the reason for that is down to the nature of the ship. Alongside 14 of his crew, Captain Long's directive was to transport 240 German immigrants from the Palatinate region of the Rhineland to build a new life for themselves in Philadelphia. However, we know that this is the tale of a ghost ship, and from the offset, their vessel was afflicted with some terribly tragic luck. Not long after passing through the Atlantic, the Princess Augusta's water supply was contaminated, causing a fever and flux to spread through the ship, killing 200 of its passengers, half the crew, and the captain himself. The ship's first mate, Andrew Brooke, quickly took command as the survivors leapt out of the frying pan and into the fire, getting hit by severe storms that pushed the ship far off course to the north. They then endured three months of extreme weather and dwindling supplies, when eventually they emerged shipwrecked in block Island, not far from Rhode Island. Here the tale splits, but one thing is certain Andrew Brooke, the first mate and commanding captain, took what remained of his crew and rowed ashore without once looking back at the cursed ship. It is said that some of the passengers survived, aided by the Block Islanders, but little to nothing is known about those that survived the entire voyage. As the legend goes, the Princess Augusta was set alight from the coast in the dead of night, pushed out to sea to burn and then disappear. At night, they say that if you listen closely, you can hear the screams of those that didn't make it back to shore. And finally, coming in at our number one spot, the Duke of Danzig. And for our most terrifying ghost ship on this list, of course it has to be a brutal and bloodthirsty pirate ship, a privateer that plundered her way across the Caribbean, notoriously in the name of her royal namesake, the Duke of Danzig. This ship's seafaring career was relatively quiet for the first few years of service, mainly acting as more of a letter of mark, a deterrent more so than a private man of war. However, her fate quickly changed after changing command and sailing under the French captain, Francois Aregnadeau. Now, his his intentions were to sail and plunder his way across the seven seas, and plunder he did from Liverpool to Barbados, capturing and scuttling more ships than he could count on his way. However, despite being a vessel of the French Empire, strangely enough, sometime after late June 1812, the Duke of Danzig just disappeared, although there are several records catching a glimpse of her around Canada 
but she was never seen again. After the last mention of her, it was thought that she'd been destroyed by a tropical cyclone or sunk in the night after an encounter with a British frigate. However, as the legend goes, that was not the last of the Duke of Danzig. After the golden age of piracy had been sated, a captain by the name of Napoleon Galois relayed his records of a French frigate encountering the wreck of the Duke of Danzig drifting listlessly at sea. As his crew witnessed, the ship itself was covered from helm to hull in dried blood, and in staggered rows were the putrefying corpses of her crew, many of which were brutally crucified to the masts or the deck. Strangely enough, there were no signs that she had been in recent battle. In fact, despite the blood, she was pristine, no shot holes, and her sails and rigging intact. After searching the ship, Galois' crew found a stack of blood-stained papers, identifying the captain as the same Francois Aregnadeau. And then, as they left, the crew of the frigate set the brig ablaze, forever to be buried at sea along with her mystery. Well there we have it horror fans, our list for the top 5 scariest ghost ships that haunt the sea. What do you guys think? Do you have any more to add or just any intriguing insights of your own? Let us know your thoughts as well as any choice picks down in the comment section below. Before we depart from today's video, let's first take a quick look at some of your more creative comments from over the past few days. Vicky Wiley says, what does LLC in Hell House LLC mean? Well Vicky, it stands for Limited Liability Company and in Hell House's case, I'm fairly confident that they didn't have the public liability to cover that kind of a haunting. Yeah, there's a business venture for you. Paranormal insurance. Yeah. Well, before I give away any more of my trade secrets, unfortunately, that's what we've got time for in today's video. Cheers, stick around all the way until the end. If you were a fan of this video or just top five scary videos in general, then please be a dear and hit that thumbs up button as well as that subscribe bell, and I'll be seeing you in the next one. As per usual, I've been your horror host, Jack Finch. You've been watching top five scary videos, and until next time, you take it easy. <laughs>